When talking about movie studios, the production companies who help finance those films don't get nearly the same amount of attention. However, New Regency, also known as Regency Enterprises, is one which has certainly built an impressive portfolio. The company was founded by Arnold Milchan, who started his career in the film business in the late 70s, and then throughout the 80s produced movies like The King of Comedy, Once Upon a Time in America, Terry Gilliam's Brazil, and The War of the Roses. These films allowed Milchan to build a name for himself in Hollywood and showed his willingness to fund ambitious films from notable directors. Most of these were funded through a company named MC International Pictures, then Regency International Pictures. The production company, known as Reach the Enterprises, was eventually formed in 1991 as part of a distribution deal with Warner Brothers. One of Regency's first successes under this pact was Oliver Stone's controversial film, JFK. The project originated at WB, but the studio was grown concerned about the possible budget and the massive length of the script. So Stone met with Milchan to help with financing, and Regency's involvement helped get the film made. While not all of Regency's films hit, they did have a decent number of box office and critical successes with Warner. A few of the notable ones include the family film Free Willy, the action movie Under Siege, and another controversial Oliver Stone picture, Natural Born Killers. A filmmaker who directed a few hit movies for Regency was Joe Schumacher, who made Falling Down and the John Grisham adaptations The Client and The Time to Kill for them. One of Regency's most acclaimed movies is Michael Mann's crime film Heat. This almost three-hour remake of an earlier made-for-television film directed by Mann got a lot of attention for the sequences where Al Pacino and Robert De Niro face off against each other and the intense robbery scenes, and remains one of the crown jewels of Regency's library. Another highlight from the company is L.A. Confidential. The film received acclaim for its smart screenplay, period details, and excellent performances from the likes of Russell Crowe, Guy Pearce, and James Cromwell. L.A. Confidential was nominated for Best Picture, and managed to win two Oscars for the screenplay and Kim Basinger's performance as a Veronica Lake lookalike, and is often regarded as one of the best movies of the 90s. In 1997, Reed C. ended its partnership with Warner Brothers and signed a new distribution deal with 20th Century Fox, with Fox additionally taking a 20% stake in the company. Reed C. would fund the films themselves, although they would also help co-finance Fox movies too. Regency's first box office hit for Fox was the caper film Entrapment, starring Catherine Zeta-Jones and Sean Connery. Reed C. also agreed to provide half the budget for Fight Club, although there was a period during production when Arnold Milchan almost withdrew Regency's support because of David Fincher going over budget. However, after seeing what had been filmed so far, Milchan decided to stick around. Even though Fight Club was not a box office success, the film nonetheless caused a stir over its violent content and themes and became one of the most talked about movies of 1999. The movie became a lot more successful when released on home video, becoming one of Fox's highest selling DVDs during the format's early years. Fight Club is actually the movie I most associate with New Regency. Regency also produced the hit Martin Lawrence comedy Big Mama's House around this time. As you can probably tell, Regency is not a production company that specializes in one type of movie. They make alternative in films, action movies, and silly comedies. And while the number of films varied, they usually contributed to about three or four movies on 20th Century Fox's slate each year. Because Regency provided the bulk of the financing and Fox only had to pay a small distribution fee, it was an easy win for Fox, especially if the film performed well at the box office or home video. One of Regency's biggest films of the early 2000s was the superhero movie Daredevil. Fox had already optioned the rights from Marvel in 1997, but they eventually allowed them to go elsewhere with Sony attaining the project. When Sony decided not to make Daredevil, Regency stepped in, so Fox ended up releasing the movie in the end anyway. Even though they were pleased with how the film performed, the sequel never came to fruition, Ben Affleck expressed regret at making the film, and the rights eventually returned to Marvel. Another major Regency production from this period was the action movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith. The film got a lot of attention for the casting of Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie as assassins, and that was enough to make it one of the highest grossing movies of 2005. Regency did occasionally work on non-Fox releases, though. When Darren Aronofsky's The Fountain saw its budget escalate and Village Roadshow leave as a co-producing partner, the producers were able to bring in new Regency to help finance the rest of the film. That did not stop Warner Brothers from stopping production and the film taking almost three years to start up again, but Regency deserves some thanks for helping getting it made. Regency also helped jumpstart the directing career of Jason Freeberg and Aaron Seltzer. They made a tidy profit on the low-budget spoof comedies Date Movie, Epic Movie, Meet the Spartans, and Vampire Suck, despite them being largely hated. The duo also sold a script of a Groundhog Day-esque premise titled Happy Place to Regency, but it was only their spoofs that got made, much to every critic's chagrin. Regency became one of the producers on the live-action Alvin the Chipmunks movie, which was a huge hit and launched a popular franchise. Lest you think Regency was only putting money behind critically reviled comedies at this point, the company was also one of the producers on Wes Anson's stop-motion animated Fantastic Mr. Fox. Otherwise, it did seem like the sorts of projects they became attached to during the 2000s and early 2010s were not what you would call prestige productions, and a far cry from the kinds of movies you would have seen Arnold Milton's name on in the 80s and 90s. 
However, in recent years, Regency has started to produce more sophisticated fare. They were one of several producers on the Best Picture winning 12 Years a Slave. Regency also had a hand in the following year's Best Picture, Birdman, along with David Fincher's Gone Girl, and the hit Oscar-winning survival film The Revenant. Regency picked up Warren Beatty's longtime Howard Hughes passion project, Rules Don't Apply, after Paramount dropped the film. The film's box office failure actually led Regency to sue Beatty, claiming he owed them money for prints and advertising. And then other producers decide to sue Regency, claiming they're the reason the film did not do well. Or maybe, hear me out, not a lot of people were interested in an old-school Hollywood romance starring an actor who had not appeared in a movie in 15 years. And I say that as a Warren Beatty fan who liked Rules Don't Apply more than most. While Regency continued its association with 20th Century Fox on movies like Bohemian Rhapsody and Ad Astra, the company has also partnered more with other distributors in recent years. Regency was a producer on Greta Gerwig's successful adaptation of Little Women, released by Columbia Pictures. And they were also involved in Robert Eggers' horror film The Lighthouse for A24 and his follow-up movie The Northman for Focus Features. When Disney acquired 20th Century Fox, there were questions about what that would mean for the studio's involvement with New Regency. Disney retained Fox's 20% stake and also inherited home video and other rights to several films in their library, including some of the Warner distributed movies like Heat and LA Confidential. Last year, Disney renewed the distribution deal with Regency, in contrast to many of the first look deals and other ventures that ended after acquiring Fox. While there have been a few films originally intended as theatrical releases by 20th Century, that Regency instead sold to streaming services. The musical Everybody's Talking About Jamie went to Amazon, while the erotic thriller Deep Water wound up on Hulu in the United States and Amazon in international markets. The first Regency production released by Disney following the aforementioned renewal deal was the horror movie Barbarian, which has performed quite nicely. Less successful has been David Russell's Amsterdam, which will reportedly lose Regency almost $100 million. So what does new Regency have coming up? The next scheduled release is True Love, a science fiction movie from Rogue One director Gareth Edwards. Filming is also about to start soon on Robert Eggers' long-planned Nosferatu remake, with folks features handling distribution. And Regency is producing Steve McQueen's upcoming World War II movie Blitz for Apple TV+. Whether New Regency is fully financing a film themselves, helping out Warner Brothers or 20th Century Fox with one of their in-house productions, or getting a director's passion project off the ground, Arden Milchin has certainly proven himself a savvy producer with an understanding of what audiences might be interested in watching. See you next time.